Suzuki GSX-8 R vs. Triumph Daytona 660 vs. Yamaha YZF R7, the ultimate middleweight sport bike showdown. What defines a middleweight sport bike today? For many years, the standard was dictated by supersport competition regulations, predominantly featuring Japanese 599 cubic centimeters inline fours. This changed when Ducati introduced its 748 cubic centimeters V-twin and later, Triumph added its 675 cubic centimeters triple to the mix. Over time, these bikes became increasingly optimized for track performance, often at the expense of their street usability. The intense competition that enhanced their racetrack prowess also drove up the development cycle, component quality, performance, and prices. As a result, consumer interest waned, with sales dropping significantly from over 20,000 units per year for a single Japanese brand in 2006 to much lower figures today. Several factors contributed to the decline of traditional supersports, such as stricter emissions regulations, the 2008 financial crisis, rising insurance rates, and evolving consumer preferences. It's clear that the traditional class is fading away. However, there is a silver lining. Manufacturers are reinventing the middleweight sport bike category. This test demonstrates that the new offerings are diverse and appealing to sport bike enthusiasts. In this test, we evaluated two new 2024 models, Suzuki's $9,439 GSX, 8R and Triumph's $9,195 Daytona 660. We also included Yamaha's $9,199 YZF R7, which remains unchanged since its 2022 debut. Although other competitors exist in this segment, we focused on these three due to their similar price points and power-to-weight ratios. Our goal was to determine which bike suits which type of rider. And yes, there is a definitive winner. Joining me for this comparison test were Cycle World in-market editor Bradley Adams and associate editor Evan Allen. After conducting dyno tests on our in-house equipment and performance tests on our closed course track, we embarked on a road trip. Over three days, we covered more than 600 miles, including freeways, urban environments, and predominantly the scenic, twisty roads around Julian, California. Engines. Unlike traditional supersport racing regulations, there are no strict rules for this new generation of middleweights, resulting in a variety of engine configurations. Parallel twins, triples, and inline fours. Two of our test bikes feature parallel twins, while the Triumph uses a triple. An interesting fact is that all three motorcycles share engines with their respective naked sport bike and adventure bike family platforms, reducing manufacturing costs and, consequently, the retail price. Suzuki's new 776 cubic centimeters parallel twin has a 270 degree crank, double overhead cams, and four valves per cylinder. It features a bore and stroke of 84.0 by 70.0 millimeters and a 12.8 to 1 compression ratio. The engine also has ride-by-wire throttle control, allowing for different ride modes. Despite its larger capacity, the Suzuki engine's horsepower was mid-range among the trio, but it produced the highest torque. On the Cycle World Dyno, the GSX 8 are achieved 72.7 horsepower at 8,125 RPM and 51.7 pound FT of peak torque at 6,650 RPM. The Triumph Daytona 660, another new model, is powered by a 660 cubic centimeters inline triple with a 240 degree firing order. Its bore and stroke measure 74.0 by 51.1 millimeters with a 12.1 to 1 compression ratio. It also features double overhead cams and four valves per cylinder, fed by three 44mm throttle bodies, unlike the naked Trident's single 38mm unit. On our dyno, the Daytona 660 produced 85 horsepower at 11,350 RPM and 44.7 pound FT of peak torque at 8,350 RPM. Yamaha's YZF R7 uses the same 689 cubic centimeters CP2 parallel twin that powers the Tenera 700 and also utilizes a 270 degree firing order. It has double overhead cams and four valves per cylinder and is fed by a pair of 38 millimeters throttle bodies. Bore and stroke measure 80.0 by 68.6 millimeters with 11.5 to 1 compression ratio. 
On the dyno, it made 64.8 horsepower at 8,500 RPM and 44.5 pound FT of torque at 6,500 RPM. The R7 may make the least power, but equals the 660 in terms of torque. You can't judge these bikes purely on their respective power output, as their weights tell much more of the story. The Suzuki carries 6.2 pounds per horsepower, the Daytona 5.2, and the Yamaha 6.4. It appears that the Triumph has a huge advantage, but things aren't always as they seem. With many miles pounded out in just a few days we got a clear taste of what these engines are all about, what they excel at, and found a few deficiencies. In urban settings the bikes are very evenly matched. Despite making the least amount of peak power, the Yamaha's light overall weight, good bottom end torque, and nice clutch engagement reduce the R7S disadvantage. The engine's tractable low-end torque and playful spirit make it a very entertaining package, Allen said. The Triumph is a bit more finicky. The Daytona's clutch isn't as user-friendly as the competition's and makes stoplight-to-stoplight -stoplight riding more challenging. For a bike that was designed almost exclusively for street riding, you'd expect a more seamless engagement at the lever. If you want the ideal combination of power and torque for city riding, look no further than the Suzuki. The Parallel Twin isn't a high-horsepower weapon, but it's exactly what you want and need from a street-first sport bike, Adams added. The abundance of torque write-off idle makes this a great engine for around town riding. Although city performance is what makes these bikes so versatile, they are sport bikes, and that is where the twists and turns of mountain roads answer some serious questions. Over our three days testing, we tackled everything from first gear hairpins to fourth and fifth gear sweepers, and that really helped distinguish their performance from each other. It is here that the Yamaha yo-yos back and forth the most. On tighter roads, the R7S competitive torque output keeps it in the hunt, along with its light overall weight. As the road opens up and the speeds increase, its big disadvantage is that it requires more frequent shifting, making this a busier bike, Adams said. On the quickest of roads, the Yamaha gets gapped a bit as the two other bikes tap into their power advantages. But the R7S sweet chassis keeps it in the game. More on that later. The Triumph has a pretty big horsepower advantage, but that doesn't tell the entire story. Despite the 660S top-end superiority, it really doesn't have a leg up on the others in terms of low-down torque. On tighter roads, the Suzuki and Yamaha are on equal footing and don't really have to work hard to keep up. It's not until the roads open up that the Triumph gets to play its ace card. The engine is incredibly smooth, with a beautiful blend of mid-range torque and top-end performance, Adams said. The billiard table smooth torque curve and unique sound help the Daytona 660 stand out from the competition. That leaves the Suzuki, which makes the most torque and has the second highest peak power. It's pretty clear that the 8R has the most versatile engine. It has excellent low-down torque, and the hardy mid-range gives it some flexibility when riding at a more spirited pace in the canyons, Adams said. The 8R is also the only bike here with a standard quick shifter, which is funny because you don't have to row the shift lever as much on this bike. It sounds like a cliché, but the Suzuki compared to the other two seems like it has power just about everywhere. No matter at what RPM you're at, crack the throttle open and it pulls. The acceleration data from our drag strip testing reveals few surprises. The 0 to 60 MPH times are all within 0.2 of a second with the Triumph just besting the Suzuki by a tenth, but the latter just nipping the 660 to 30 miles per hour. Thanks for watching. Drop a like. Leave a comment. And don't forget to subscribe to watch more videos like this.